Amen. Well, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Welcome, everybody, to Bible study. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you for joining us tonight. And uh, looking forward to what the Lord has prepared for us tonight. And uh, we will be in the book of uh, Acts chapter 19 this morning, verse 21 through 41. And we'll be closing up uh, this chapter, actually, and for this month as well, as well as we don't have Bible study next week. So just a quick reminder on that. Amen. So we're going to prepare to open up this morning. And Sister Cynthia, do you mind opening up the prayer? Yeah. Amen. Father God, in Jesus' name, we just come before you, Lord. We thank you, Father God, for this time. We thank you, Father God, that we just thank you for your mercy yes, and your Lord grace, Jesus. Father yes, Lord. We just thank Hallelujah. you, Father God, for your Holy Hallelujah. Spirit, which is the power that lives within us, Father God, and strengthens us this day, Father God. Yes, Lord Jesus. We ask that you would just bring just peace upon our hearts and our minds, Father God, that we would be able to receive your word, Father God. We thank you for this time, Father God, and we just ask all of this in your mighty name. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Well, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We're just excited for what the Lord is doing. So uh, just a couple of quick reminders. On Friday night, we do have the Rich Ministry Rooted in Christ. So we'll be meeting with the youth on Friday night here at 7 p.m. So just really looking forward to what the Lord Lord has and uh you know it's summertime so we're just you know it's a blessing to be able to come together and just be able to hang out with the youth and uh just see you know just for the time of fellowship for them as well amen so that'll be this uh this friday at 7 p.m and we just encourage all the rich kids to come out amen uh sunday morning we will have our our 9 15 uh, morning word in the morning as we're going to the book of Psalm 119. And uh, it's been a blessing. The last the last teachings have been great and just leading us in prayer in that time and just really meditating on the word of God and uh, seeking him through his word. So we're going to continue in that this uh, Sunday morning at 915. And then it will be also our 1045 service on Sunday as well. So I know last time I had mentioned we were still going to be continuing the teachings that we've been going through, the discipleship uh, teachings. Um, so the things kind of changed up a little bit the week before Father's Day and then this Father's Day this Sunday. So we're going to continue in the disciple teaching this uh, this Sunday and we're going to continue in the book of Matthew chapter nine. We'll be closing up the first part of the teaching and it has to do with compassion. Amen. So that'll be our word. So I believe I mentioned it a couple weeks ago in Bible study. So I believe that just kind of gave us more time to kind of ponder that word compassion. Amen. So that'll be part of the teaching this coming Sunday. And uh, just really looking forward to what the Lord is doing. Um, also, just a quick reminder. So next Wednesday, there is no Bible study. So we will not be having Bible study next Wednesday. And uh, next Friday is our first Friday of the month. So there will be no ministry class or no no service next Friday as well. So I encourage you to enjoy the time. God bless next you. Wednesday, no. Next Wednesday, there will be no oh, Bible study. Yeah. So next week, there will be no Bible study, but I encourage you, you know, we do have uh, what I did is I took. Um, so if you ever want to get caught up on the Bible studies or kind of go back and kind of see what we've been doing. Um, recently, I went into the YouTube channel and I created playlists. So right now on the playlist, we do have the Bible study teachings all in one place. So you're able to go in. So you don't got to go through video by video and you can actually go back and actually find that it'll be. I think I titled it Bible study book of Acts. And uh, you're able to go back in there and kind of see the teachings in order there. Also, for uh, we have Nehemiah in there when we're, we're teaching Nehemiah. Uh, we have half of Ezra because we didn't start doing the stream yet, but we had already started in the book of Ezra. But the ones that are on, you know, on there is there, um, you know, so that's kind of it's a blessing there. So, um, if, you know, even though we're not having Bible study, if you like to go back and just get caught up on some Bible studies, definitely do so. And you can find them there on the YouTube. Amen. And also on the podcast as well. The podcast, uh, we're a little behind on keeping them updated, but we are updating them. And, uh, you know, so definitely, you know, it's also a good good way to get caught up with us and to study along with us. Amen. So looking forward to that. Praise God. So those are the announcements for tonight. And uh, does anybody have a praise report? Just want to give the Lord a shout or just, you know, just a scripture that comes to mind or anything they just like to Anybody just like to share before we start? This is... Uh... Philippians 4 13 is kind of the, uh, that verse that we dedicated to our our son. So he uses it and we use that too. Amen. Amen. So Praise the Lord. Amen. I'm thankful that uh, God has revealed that we can do all things to him. That's right. Amen. That's right. Amen. And that's, you know, that's our scripture on that rock that we got. Amen. That everybody thought was a bar of soap. Amen. <laughs> so praise God. You know, 
But um, so I'm thinking about maybe next year I am going to do a bar of soap. Amen. And we'll see what the Lord teaches us, uh, man of God. Right. Amen. So we'll see. We'll do some fancy body, some fancy body soap next year or something. We'll see. Amen. So that, that's good. But amen. Praise God. I can do all things to Christ Jesus who gives me the strength. Amen. And that is how many of us know that is very important for all of us. Praise God. And, you know, Letty said something on Sunday and it just really continued to really just penetrate my heart because it really stood out to me as she was teaching on the, on the morning prayer for Psalm 119. And she said that, you know, memorization is meant to empower, not meant for points. You know, and many times, you know, we, we can kind of get to that place where we're memorizing scripture because we're looking to earn points with God or anything like that. But it's not meant for that. It's meant to empower us because memorization is power because it's the word of God that is alive. And it's nothing like when that word of God becomes reality to me and you. And we actually start to walk it out because we truly believe what God's word is speaking and saying. And it may start off that way, just kind of, you know, just speaking it and learning it. And, and as we read it. But it's, it's another thing when it goes from here to here into our heart and now becomes a way of life and the way of how we think and what we believe in our faith in Christ Jesus. And not only that, the growth and maturity in the relationship with our Lord and Savior. Amen. So that is a blessing there. I just had a, uh, uh, sometimes in the subtlest ways, you know, people are witnessing it and uh, we went to a surprise party. You you know the gentleman that used to come with me all the time. His name is Mike. Well, they had a surprise party for him, at, uh, at an 85th <coughs> surprise party. And, and the people were, were saying complimentary things about him, you know, getting up. And one person uh, said that uh, she was so happy that Mike had... Uh, Expressed Jesus Christ to her, and uh, you know she, she expounded on that. You know, Amen. and uh, I, you know, I looked at that. I think through my mom. Uh, you know, when we were small, my mom used to witness to all my friends, and I was <laughs> at the point where, Mom, that's okay. You know, <laughs> and, uh, yeah, they're saying, yeah, they're saying, <laughs> but. The word penetrated to him as they got older. Amen, amen. Praise and, God. And uh, Jesus came on a way of life for them. Amen, you know? amen. And, uh, so it it made me feel good that I, would, I had a little bit to do it, but my mother had a lot to do with it. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. That's awesome. Yes. Amen. The power of the word of God and the fruits of his yeah. word. Amen. Yeah. And that's what keeps us and brings us. And so that's why, you know, and that's even more hope there that we never give up right on those that we're praying for, you know, because the, the word of God is able to penetrate the hearts of man, of human beings, you know. I mean, it penetrated our hearts to the place that now we believe and trust yeah, in the Lord. Because I've heard you mention that your mom had planned her to see you yeah. in, 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 into your life, too. That's right. Amen. So, so you, you grow up, but you don't. You don't forget it, right? <laughs> amen. Amen. Teach your child in the way he should go, and we as old he shall not depart, right? Yes. And, that, and we hold on to that word, and we trust in that word, you know, yes. and because his word is faithful. And he is able to do far more abundantly than we could ever dare to imagine or even hope for. He's able to do the impossible. And even when things look impossible, in him, his, his, all things are possible. And his word is faithful and proven true. So amen. So Praise God. But again, we got to go back to that scripture. But Lord, when it gets tough and it gets hard, thank you for that word that says I can do all things to Christ who strengthens me. Amen. Amen. Even when I feel I can't do it, Lord, but I can in you. Amen. And he, he gives us the strength to keep going, trusting and believing him and keeping that faith in him. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Well, thank you. Thank you so much for sharing that and just encouraging. Amen. Oh, and also, <clears throat> uh, then we're going to say happy birthday to him. And... Uh, so we had to get up in front of everybody and see, you know, it's kind of like a joke they want me to leave. I said, okay, I'll leave the happy birthday, but I want to pray for him first. Amen. And so amen. I did pray for him and, you know, laid hands on him. And, uh, you know, I, I don't know if any, look, anybody uh, took it too hard or what. But it was important for me to do that. Oh, amen. 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 That's, 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 you know, and that's what we have. That's the best gift I believe we can give to anybody is the fact that we can pray for somebody. 
you know. So anytime we get an opportunity, right? That's one of the best. What the worst that can happen is they can say no. Yeah. Amen. That's and right. even if they say no, that's okay. I'm still gonna pray for you. <laughs> so I'm still gonna pray for you. Maybe not in front of all these people, or maybe not even in front of you, but I'm still gonna pray for you either way. And we can take that time. So because we know the one that's hearing and we know the one that can do yeah. all things. Amen. So praise God. Amen. Well, thank you for that encouragement today, brother. Appreciate that. And you know, it leads us in today's scripture, definitely, is just to continue to stay in the way of God and continuing to trust God through every circumstance and through every situation, but also the importance of knowing our Savior and knowing our Lord and knowing that, you know what, it's all about you, Lord. It's not about anything else but you. So we're going to be looking at that today in, in this in this teaching tonight as we look into Acts chapter 19, verse 21 through 41. And the title of tonight's message is The Way. You know, and in case you're wondering what the way is, does anybody know what the way is? Jesus. Jesus. Amen. Christianity. Amen. So it was just a term that was that was used for Christians back in that day. They were they were known as the way, you know, which is, you know, but now we're known as Christians or believers or you have a bunch of other names for us, too. But, you know, we won't get into those. But as as believers in Christ Jesus, you know, but this was this was a term that was used back in these this day. They were known as the way. You know, and to me, it, just, it refers to the Jesus. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except for him. Or as, as our scripture of this church, you know, um, enter by a new and living way, right? Through the blood of Jesus. Amen. So we are that. And that's what we're looking at tonight as those that are following in this way, but also looking at, you know, the things that they go through in following Christ. Amen. So we're going to take a look at this tonight. So let's look at, let's go ahead and read it. And then we're going to come down. We're going to kind of break it down a bit and kind of look at some things. So any questions or comments or anything like that, feel free to let me know and we'll, we'll all come together. Amen. 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 So Acts chapter 19, verse 21 through 41, <clears throat> it says, now after these events, Paul resolved in the spirit to pass through Macedonia and Achaia and go to Jerusalem saying, after I have been there, I must also see Rome. And having sent into Macedonia two of his helpers, Timothy and Erastus, he himself stayed in Asia for a while. About that time, there arose no little disturbance concerning the way. For a man named Demetrius, a silversmith who made silver shrines of Artemis, brought no little business to the craftsmen. These he gathered together with the workmen in similar trades and said, Men, you know that from this business we have our wealth. And you see and hear that not only in Ephesus, but in almost all of Asia, this Paul has persuaded and turned away a great many people saying that gods made with hands are not gods. Verse 27, and there is danger not only that this trade of ours may come into disrepute, but also that the temple of the great goddess Artemis may be counted as nothing and that she may even be deposed from her magnificence, she whom all Asia and the world worship. When they heard this, they were enraged and were crying out, great is Artemis of the Ephesians. So the city was filled with the confusion and they rushed together into the theater, dragging with them Gaius and, Ar Gaius and Aristarchus and Macedonians who were Paul's companions in travel. But when Paul wished to go in among the crowd, the disciples would not let him. And even some of the Asiarchs, who were friends of his, sent to him and were urging him not to venture into the theater. Now some cried out one thing, some another, for the assembly was in confusion. And most of them did not know why they had come together. Some of the crowd prompted Alexander, whom the Jews had put forward, and Alexander, motioning with his hand, wanted to make a defense to the crowd. But when they recognized that he was a Jew, for about two hours, they all cried out with one voice, Great is Artemis of the Ephesians. And when the town clerk had quieted the crowd, he said, Men of Ephesus, who is there who does not know that the city of the Ephesians is temple keeper of the great Artemis and of the sacred stone that fell from the sky? Seeing then that these things cannot be denied, you ought to be quiet and do nothing rash. For you have brought these men here who are neither sacrilegious nor blasphemers of our goddess. If, there, if therefore Demetrius and the craftsmen with him have a complaint against anyone, the courts are open and there are proconsuls. Let them bring charges against one another. But if you seek anything further, it shall be settled in the regular assembly, for we really are in danger of being charged with rioting today, since there is no cause that we can give to justify this commotion. 
And when he had said these things, he dismissed the assembly. Father, we just thank you tonight for your word. We thank you, Lord, as we come together tonight, Lord Jesus, seeking you through your word and through your teaching, Lord. And as your children, as your servants, and as your disciples, Lord, we ask you to teach us by your spirit, Lord, as we submit unto you, Lord Jesus. Father God, Lord, we need you, Lord God, to teach us, to instruct us, to show us, my God, and to open up our hearts tonight, Father God, to be able to receive this word, Lord God, and Lord, to learn from this word, and Father, to be able to see, Lord Jesus, what you want us to see, to hear what you want us to hear, Father God, and to live according to how you speak to us and what you teach us tonight, Lord. But Father, we cannot do it alone, Lord. We need you, Lord. So Father, tonight, we just thank you for this word tonight. We thank you for the privilege and the opportunity to be able to study your word, to be able to seek you through your word by your spirit. And we just thank you for this time tonight, Lord, as we come together, Lord. We ask you to lead us and guide us by your spirit. Lord Jesus, you bring forth this teaching tonight. And Lord, help us to receive this word by your spirit, Lord, because Lord, we know your Holy Spirit witnesses to your word because you are one, my God. So we just thank you tonight, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 <laughs> well, amen. We're going to look over here at, uh, at so we're going to go back over here to verse 21. Amen. And so we see here that Paul is continuing in his walk and continuing in the ministry and everything that he is doing here. So we're going to look right here at verse 21. And I don't have a lot of scripture tonight because there's a couple of things that I kind of want to touch on here. And my, you know, as I'm reading this, it just really opened up a lot of things that kind of I didn't, you know, I've seen. But to see it here in scripture, it's like it's like it's happening today. I was like, wow, this is. You know, this was really uh, an eye-opening study as I sat down and was really reading it. But it wasn't so much that I was seeing it from the point of view as we as a church looking to others. I was actually seeing the church the way that sometimes or maybe even how we have become in certain areas and our walk with the Lord. And see, that's kind of sobering because many times we want to look at the word of God and just like... Israel back in the day, they would look at the word of God and then they would use that to demean or undermine or to look down on other people. But that's not what the word of God is meant to do. The word of God is meant to first point that to ourselves so we can see what the issue is. Yes, Brother Ajay. Yeah, that would be in that text right now where you said they use the word to condemn, you know. Yeah, instead of to build up. Yes. Instead of to build up. And sometimes we can we can find ourselves in that place. And it's called self-righteous. It's called pride, you know, and we have to be very careful in this. And that's why we love the word of God, because it's the word of God is not meant to bring condemnation. It's meant to bring about repentance. It's meant to see ourselves in such a way where we're looking in a mirror. But at the same time, what it does is it brings gratitude to the Lord to say, man, Lord, thank you for helping me to see this within myself first. Because I realize there's some areas and in, in things that you're working in, in my heart and in my life. So my prayer is tonight is that we would be open to being able to see what the Lord is teaching us tonight through his word. And just by an example of what is going on in Ephesus here. Amen. So we're going to look at this right now. And so let's look at verse 21. We're just going to touch on a couple of things here. It says, now after these events... Paul resolved in the spirit to pass through Macedonia and Achaia and to go to Jerusalem, saying, after I have been there, I must also see Rome. So we see here and we're going to see this going forward as, as we see in the book of Acts. And this is not only something that Paul wanted to do, but this is something that Paul that God told Paul he would eventually do even though he would be persecuted and all these different things. But one of the blessings about Paul in this, and because remember, Paul lived, a, it was a hard ministry. You know, just like Jesus, Jesus walking in the land, but Jesus always knew that there was, a, there was a purpose for it all. And that purpose was the cross and the resurrection. But there was a goal. We have a goal and that's eternal life. That is to, to stand in faith in Christ. But we also have purpose and planning that many times God will make known but see, it's not just so we can boast or say, oh, well, 
you know, God's going to do this in my life than that, because Paul knew it was not going to be an easy road. It was going to be a rocky road to get to that purpose. But see, what God was doing was giving Paul this 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 um, this promise, because no matter what Paul would go through or face, he knew that, no, but I still got to get to Rome. So I'm going to trust the Lord through this that he will fulfill this ministry and get me to that place. So this is something that's already being burdened in Paul because God hasn't necessarily spoke to him yet on this, but it's already become a desire because how many of us know that as you spend time with the Lord, eventually his desires start to become our desires. See, Paul could have been like, I want to go to Rome because I want to go vacation there. <laughs> I want to go see all the magnificent buildings and the structures, and I want to go be a part. But that wasn't Paul's desire. Paul's desire was to go to Rome so, therefore, he could preach the gospel. Think about it. Everywhere that Paul had been and was going was all influenced by Rome. Everything that was there, they were under Roman rule. So there was influences of Rome everywhere that he went. So by bringing the message to Rome, he would basically at, be at the center and the, of the influence and the power of, where, of the source because Rome is where it was at. So instead of, I mean, he's going to all these other places, but imagine him getting to Rome. Now he's in the place that is influencing the entire world, the place that everyone is following after. That would be the center of where everything would come out of, the influence, the power, everything, the laws, all these different things. Everybody was afraid of Rome. So Paul's desire was now to go to Rome. If somebody can look at Psalm 37 and read Psalm 37, verse 3 through 4. Psalm 37, verse 3 through 4. Hold our place here in Acts. We're going to come back. But let's look at Psalm 37, verse 3 through 4. Says, Trust in the Lord and do good. Then you will live safely in the land and prosper. Take take delight in the Lord, and He will give you your heart's desire. Amen. So to, to to trust in the Lord and do good, right? So no matter what, the Lord still commands us that even through all of the stuff that we go through and face, He's commanding us to trust in Him. But not only that, to continue to do good to continue to seek to do good and to continue to want to do good. You know, because automatically we can get an attitude, well, Lord, I just, I'm not going to do this right now because I'm just, I'm going through it. So I don't want to do the right thing right now. I don't feel like being nice. I don't feel like doing this. But the Bible's telling us that we're supposed to continue to do good, to trust him because in that we get to, he takes care of us. He's faithful to us. But he also says to delight yourself in the Lord. And I used to love, I love the way that this, uh, Dr. Bennett would always bring it. He would talk about this lady who was going, ooh, ooh, ooh. she would do all these. I would love how he would do that. You know, and he would, he asked her, you know, like, what are you doing? And she goes, well, I'm delighting myself in the Lord. And he says, that's not what it means, you know. And really what it's talking about to delight yourself in the Lord is really to become putty in the, in the, in the Lord's hands. It's to make yourself moldable. To the Lord's purpose. It's, it's submitting to God. And in that it says he will give you the desires of your heart. But see it's as we walk with the Lord. Now our desires become his desires. Because we realize that what he has in store for us is greater than what we could ever have in store. You know it's you know I look like right now you know preparing for vacation. I love that. It's like man it's so exciting you know. But how many of us know then we got to come back? <laughs> got to get back to reality. And it's like it's, it's, it's there and it's gone so quick. You're like, man, you know, it, it goes by so fast because everything here, it, it's just temporary. You know, you can have all the money in the world, but it's temporary. You could have the greatest looks, but those looks are temporary. <laughs> They're going to fade, you know. And so all of these things are temporary. But what those things that are in Christ are eternal. It's forever. And it has so much more of an impact and so much more of, an, of a lasting significance than our own plans and our own desires. But imagine over 2,000 years ago, Jesus Christ died on the cross for our sins. And today we're still preaching the message of salvation 
because of his death and resurrection. And that came through sacrifice. We're talking about Paul today and those that are here in the Bible today. And these were lives that were looking that their desires now became the desires of the Lord. And so we see an, a good example here in Paul's life that his desire was to go to Rome to preach the gospel. Works both ways. Yeah. Amen. Yes, it he does. Desires that are our desires. Like you said, yeah. desires are his desires. It comes in line with it. And many times we can think, well, maybe my desires are not God's desires. But think about it this way. It says that in the spirit, he wanted to go to Rome. He was being nudged. So that was a desire that was already prepared and being placed as, as he would be prepared to hear from God that God would tell him he is going to go to Rome. It was shown that he's going to get tied up and, you know, he's going to get prison, but he was going to go to Rome. Yeah. You know, <laughs> he was going to get he was going to get there. And many times we may have desires in our lives that we think, well, I guess it's just not going to happen. But if the desire is there and you're walking with the Lord, trust the Lord that the Lord placed a desire in there. He may be working some things out. He may be refining it. He may be teaching me and you how to focus and not focus only on the desire, but to focus on him. But nevertheless, that desire is there because he placed it there. And there is a reason and a purpose for it, but it's a matter of trusting him and him bringing it about in his time and also for his purpose and for his will for our lives. That is an amazing thing. You know, it's, it's, you know, and we never know what the Lord has planned, but we can trust him through it. And we see this here that there was a reason and a purpose why Paul wanted to go to Rome, because that's where the Lord would eventually take him. Because the message would reach Rome. And if the message of the gospel would be brought forth. Amen. amen. It's a lot in just that one verse. Amen. <laughs> so any other thoughts or comments on that? Any, anything on that? Okay. Amen. We're delighting ourselves in the Lord. Amen. Yes. Not the <laughs> amen. Full submission. All right. Unto the Lord. Amen. Praise God. So let's look at verse 22. It says, and having sent into Macedonia two of his helpers, Timothy and Erastus, he himself, he himself stayed in Asia for a while. So we get to see here the benefits that Paul's not doing this alone. He has co-laborers with him. And so we get to know these co-laborers, Timothy. Where's Timothy from? First and second Timothy, amen. He actually wrote two letters to Timothy. So we see here that these are these are close um, co-laborers with Paul. And because Paul was able to trust them, he was able to put them out there and they were able to help him in the work. So they stayed out in Macedonia while Paul stayed in Asia and continued the work there. So we get to see how they're working together. Not only that, Erastus, and then he's in, uh, you'll find him in Romans 16, 23. He was actually the city treasurer of Corinth. So we get to see here that this is someone that the Lord is also using in the ministry with Paul. And it's just encouraging because we get to see that Paul is not alone. And even throughout the scripture, we're going to see he's not alone in this. There are those that are with him that are serving the Lord together. Amen. Not serving, you know, under Paul or serving Paul. They're serving the Lord together, doing the work, the work, the, the work of the Lord. Amen. So we get to see that here. And we, we as he mentions them here. So now we're going to look at the, the main part of this, this scripture here. And we're going to look at verse 23. It says, about that time, there arose no little disturbance concerning the way. Okay. So one of the two things that Paul in the ministry, and actually any one of us will be guaranteed in this ministry of the gospel, is there will be some that will receive it and some that won't. There will be some that ignore it. But regardless, as we look in the book of Acts, we always see there's two responses. They either receive it with joy and they repent and come to know the Lord, or it makes people mad and upset and it brings about persecution. <laughs> but regardless, the message still goes forward. The Bible talks about that to a believer, it is a, it's a beautiful fragrance. But to a non-believer, it's the smell of death. Because it brings about conviction. It brings about, it brings about conviction. 
to sh you bring into light through the gospel of acknowledging the need of a savior that brings to light sin. It brings the it brings to light the need for God. And so therefore, for those that don't want to believe or just don't believe yet or don't know, it's it's not always going to be receptive. They're not going to want to hear that. That's why many times the best way to, to let your light shine is to let it shine through your actions in your life live as you continue to follow in the way of Christ. The way, the truth, and the life. That is our best witness and testimony. And let God work in the hearts of those that are watching you. You stay faithful. We stay faithful. As Paul and, and we see the disciples are staying faithful. Yes, Brother AJ. Yeah, sometimes your witness, they become defensive. And attack you for your witness. Yeah, Amen. You know, Pastor Abel would say something. He would, he would, he was a, was a phrase he would always say it was, you know, I do everything I can to witness, and when the time permits, I'll speak. You know, so it's 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 our lives yeah. lived. I remember that. Yeah, and it, it's definitely it's an example, and many times that's how we have that's that's what we do because we can continue to hit people with the word and with the word and we can continue. You need to do this. You need to do that. But remember the more that we tell somebody that they need to, they're not going to want to because by nature, we're rebellious. Sinful nature is rebellious. And so automatically within me and you, and, and honestly, we, we're still fighting the sinful nature. How many of us know we got that flesh still here? Amen. <laughs> so, you know, we could relate to this because we become rebellious. And so imagine hearing, 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 it's, it's just what's going to do. It's just going to cause a wall, a hardened heart, and want to push away the truth. But when, you know, when, when somebody cannot resist the love of God and just seeing the actions and, and seeing the, the patience and just seeing that continual striving with the Lord, there's nothing like it because what that does is just tears down the barriers. It just, you know what, God is just able to do things through our lives that we can't even imagine. So let me encourage you and let's be encouraged tonight. Let us continue to trust the Lord. But see right here, Paul is not, he's getting some good responses, but he's also not getting, he's also getting some responses that are not good. And again, the way is referring to what Christians were called in this time, believers, they were known as the way. And as John 14, six says, the way, the tree is the way, the truth and the life. And no one comes to the father except through him. Amen? Amen. So this is how they were known as believers. They were known, they were following the way. But because of what Paul was doing and the work he was doing, it was unsettling for some people. It made some people mad. It made some people mad and upset. And so now we're going to start to look at their response because they were angry and upset. OK, so that's what we're going to be looking at next. And how many of us know that anybody who gets mad when we get mad, right? What's the first thing we want to do? We want to respond, <laughs> right? We want to speak our mind. We want we want to respond in that. Yes, brother. Did you look at, at Caesar as one of their uh, leaders or God at that time? And, and did they feel that it was against Caesar's belief or Caesar's, uh, see what's the word I'm thinking? Caesar's rule. Well, no, not in this case right here. Right here in this case, they're going to go about another way here because they still had their freedoms to be able to worship their gods. And we see that through all the different provinces. It was just more of the governmental structure of Rome. But they were still worshiping all their gods and all these different things. So, you know, so right here and, and right here is not something that really is they're going to use basically upon Rome. They're going to use this in a different way. To basically come at at Paul, so we're going to look at right now what the root of this is, and so therefore we can have an idea and we can see clearly, so we can recognize these things. Because see, they didn't have the Bible in that time; they didn't have the Book of Acts yet. They were still getting written, right? So, but now we have the Book of Acts, and now we can go back and look at this and learn from it. Amen. So that's that's the lesson here as well. So we're going to look at verse twenty four through twenty six here. It says. For a, net, a man named Demetrius, a silversmith who made silver shrines of Artemis, brought no little business to the craftsmen. These he gathered together with the workmen in similar trades and said, Men, you know that from this business we have our wealth. And you see and hear that not only in Ephesus, but in almost all of Asia, this Paul has persuaded and turned away a great many people, saying that gods made with hands are not gods. 
So I'm going to throw this out there. Why is Demetrius upset? I'm making money. Can you repeat that again? Why is Demetrius upset? Oh, because he wasn't making money. Yeah, because he wasn't making money. He wasn't making money. So what would you say his number one concern is here? Monetary. Monetary. Money. Exactly. See, his first response, okay? This is where you really learn where we're at many times. This is a good eye opener many times within our hearts is you usually find out where we stand or where we're at when we become angry, frustrated, and we find out what our first response is. Yeah. Now, thank God for his mercy and grace. Amen. But many times me and you will become so sober because of our first response to a situation, to an action, to whatever it may be. And many times what that does is it exposes something within our heart. And right here we see that Demetrius' heart and what's important to him came out from this response. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So this is what is in Demetrius' heart because he first goes, and this is his main concern, like you said, I'm not making any money. First Timothy 6.10 says this, and this is, you know, one of his helpers that he that <clears throat> Paul is now writing in this chapter. He says, for the love of money is the root of all evil. And some people craving money have wandered from the true faith and pierced themselves with many sorrows. See, he writes this to Timothy because Timothy would be a young pastor. He would be in the ministry, but he's also a child of God. And he writes this later on to Timothy as instruction, as a way to be able to recognize these things in the hearts of men, in the hearts of people. But not only that, but also for himself to make sure that he does not fall into that place. Right. It's like I said before, that that one song is it hits the heart is a thin line between love and hate. <laughs> well, how many of us know there's a thin line between sin and righteousness? There is a thin line that we walk, but thank God in that narrow way that Christ helps us to stay on the road, right? But regardless of the fact, Paul is showing and teaching him and telling and reminding him so that he can recognize by listening to the response and the way people talk to see what is the root of it. It's not that money is evil. The Bible talks about in Matthew 6 how he knows what we need. We need finances. You know, money can be used for good. It's used to build churches for missionaries. It's used to help those that are poor, you know, and it's it's able. It's used to, you know, pro, you know um, take care of your family. Yeah, it's to provide, so it's, uh, it's a good thing. But uh, an example of it where it becomes evil is when sin is involved because we know about this and in the Gospels that Judas was in charge of the treasury mm -hmm. and his yeah. concern was always about money. And yeah. His sin was exposed. And what does it say here? It's the root. What is a root? What does a root do? The beginning. Mm -hmm. A root digs deep down. And it grows. But not only does it grow this way, but it grows downward. So when it says the root of all e money can be the root of all evil, that's where it starts. And we get to see here that Demetrius has a root. And that root is greed. That root is money. And because of that, his first response is, is you're messing with my business. Paul is bad for business. Paul is bad for business. So what does he do? He basically, he finds others that have this same concern. Because what's the one thing we want to do when we want to prove ourselves right? Find those that we know are going to agree with yeah. us. Agree with us. Yeah. And even if they don't agree with us, you're going to find a way that they will agree with you, because if you present it in the right way, then you're going to have some listeners, especially when it comes to money. See, we have to be very careful with money, you know, because it's it's you know, many times we hear teachings or we hear different things. But as soon as it talks about money, we go, oh, hold on there. Hold on. So what do we do is we find others around us that. Want, we want to hear how they, because it's money, so we want to hear what they have to say because we want to find others that think the same way we do. Instead of looking to the word of God 
and looking to God and asking the Lord, Lord, how do I do this? How do I spend my money? How do I manage and be a good steward as your word tells me to be? And find out what the Bible talks about, about finances, about money and how to use it in the right way. You know, and this is a lifelong lesson. Don't get me wrong. I'm not there. I'm still learning myself. But I realize to the one I have to come to that we need to come to. But see, he ends up going and finding other businessmen. And it says that work in similar trades. So what he's doing now, he's saying, look, this is bad for business, not just for me, but for all of you. And he goes and he starts to plot. And he starts to go out and get others on board with him because he wanted to make this known that this is not good for our business. This man is teaching people that they don't need what we have for them. He's teaching people about a God that doesn't need a statue. And remember, Paul wasn't going around and making fun of their gods. And, you know, I'm sure at times there were times he had to be very stern. But look at what he did with the unknown God on, on all those gods they had. He says, let me tell you about this unknown God. What he did is he told them about Jesus, about his power, about his authority, how he's God of gods, Lord of lords, King of kings. No other compares. It was up to the hearer and those that were receiving the word to respond and recognize, you know what? All these other gods, they, they're, they're nothing. They're not even God's. Compared to my God, there's only one God, but it would have to be a response of the hearer because if Paul just went in and started making fun of their gods and telling this and that, then what's going to happen? All of a sudden, the defense is going to come up and they're going to they're going to harden their hearts because like, no, we don't want to hear this. But instead, what he does is he points them the way, the way to Jesus. And Jesus did the same thing in his ministry. It's always pointing to him. But these men are not concerned about that. These men are concerned about money. They're concerned about their business and their livelihood. This is what's driving Demetrius. So because Demetrius is so concerned in that he has a plan, he has a plot. And so all of this is now orchestrated. This is not something that just happened. This this uh, commotion that goes on, this is not just something that happened. This was plotted. This was planned. There was more to this than the people would even realize. What we're seeing here is we're seeing the root of it. We're seeing the, the light shining in the darkness and bringing this to the light so we can recognize this in today's world and our lives today. See, there was this was all planned. Demetrius knew what he was doing because he was looking out for his best interest and the best interest of his business and of his income. So he goes out and he tells these other businessmen the same thing, and he starts to rile up the people. So I wrote here, Paul was bad for business. He addresses first those who have the same at stake and then uses it for their own purpose and gives in, in what's it called and basically you know, drives them away. But then what he goes on to do is he disguises it. He disguises his root. He disguises his motive. He disguises what he really wants out of this. Remember, who's Demetrius looking out for? Demetrius. Demetrius. That's it. You think he cares about these other businessmen? He don't care about them. Business is business. I'm sure even in the in the gods, they were probably in competition. Hey, well, I got these gods over here, man. I'll give you three for 10 bucks. Yeah. <laughs> right? It's business. It was, it's business. It, it we could look at it. Well, no, they wouldn't have did that. It was, you know, they were no, there was it was business. They were looking to take each other out because if I can knock you out of business, now everybody's gonna come to me for the gods. Cutthroat. It's cutthroat, it's business. That's what it is. You know, the reality of that's what that is. So imagine that's why Jesus was so upset when he went in the temple. He says, my, my father's house would be a house of prayer, but you turn into a den of thieves. See, yeah, they were there selling the stuff for the, the what's it called sacrifices, but it was business. There was cutthroat going on in there. There was people undermining one another. There was people cheating. There was people, you know, throwing others under the bus. There was people trying to, hey, come over here, buy our doves. You know, these are the best doves right here, man. You know, these are organic doves. You know, don't get that, that that GMO doves. You know, these are the ones you want over here, you know. In reality, it's just a pigeon that they painted white, you know. So it was, 
you know, you got, it was business. That's why Jesus was like, no, he started turning over the money changers, started kicking everybody out. He started whipping everybody to get the hell out of the, his father's house. Because that had no place in the, in the temple. That has no place in the presence of God. That has no place in the church. Church is not a business. Yes, we live in a country that we have to abide by laws and different things. But nevertheless, church is not a business. It's not a trade. It's not something that, you know what, oh, I want to do this. No, no, it's as God appoints. It's not a business. It's a body of Christ. Yes, we need to be wise and use wisdom. And yes, sir, we have to follow the laws. But the heart of it is not a business. God never intended for that. Now, and there is a difference, or is there a difference, when a church sells tickets for a, an event or a dinner or something like that? Uh, is that that's not considered that's not a like a business. they're not looking to make profit on it they're using yeah. it to put towards the event they're right. using it you know one of the blessings that my grandmother blessed me one day with you know you know a couple years back many years ago she would say i i love going to your church because i i, I don't mind giving because i get to see all the things you do you pour it back into the church Amen. you know the, all the things you guys do and it's like and that's what the church is supposed to do that's yes. what you know when when the when the people were coming and laying all their their finances and they were selling their houses and laying all the finances to the to the apostles feet the apostles were taking that and using it for the ministry but also distributing it among those around them so there was none in need so it's about buying and selling yeah and it's profit. yeah that's it's not it's not a, it's when you're trying to make a profit and you're using God's name in that. Because yes. again, is that about God or is that about you? Yeah. Am I selling me? Yeah. <laughs> or am I selling Christ? Yeah. Both of them are wrong because I'm not even supposed to sell Christ. Salvation is free. That's right. Salvation is free. Yeah. You know, don't get me wrong. There's nothing wrong with Christian Christians having business and stuff like that. You know, but there are there are areas that we have to be careful. We have to be careful as church, yeah. you know, because then it be, you know, it can be just become about business. And that's where, and again, it's all a matter of the heart. You know, the Lord will structure and use, and I'm, I'm grateful to the Lord for, you know, that those that know how that are teaching about finances and all these different things and are running different things and have all these organizations, praise God, you know, because our prayer is always Lord, as long as it's your heart yeah. and it's your heart giving the wisdom in that, but it's when it's, the heart is only about business. Yes. You know, when it becomes like, well, I'm going to sell these tickets, but we're going to make a profit because this is what it's all about. This is how much money we're going to make. And that's that's the goal. So what happens is, is when COVID-19 hits. And now not all that money is coming in. Well, how are we going to make this money? How are we going to make up for what we're losing? Well, let's do this. Let's do that because we don't want to lose how much money we were making. What's the focus? Christ or the finances? In Christ, all the finances are taken care of. Yes. But if I focus on the finances, we're going to find ourselves in a place of compromise trying to achieve that place. And that's a dangerous place. And that's what the Lord is dealing with. This is what the Lord is. We're seeing that response in there. But see... Demetrius wasn't dumb. He used patriotism and religious loyalty to hide the truth of what he really wanted to do. See, that's a dangerous place right there that I just said that. But this is what he was doing. See, he goes out. We see his heart. This is affecting my business. He's making a lot of money, and because it's not now. But look at verse 27. It says, and there is danger not only that this trade of ours may come into disrepute, but also that the temple of the great goddess Artemis may be counted as nothing, and that she may even be deposed from her magnificence, she whom all Asia and the world worship. See, so now he goes into, and because if, if we don't stop them, you know, many people are going to stop worshiping the great god Artemis or Diana. He uses religion. He uses the loyalty of the people and now uses that as a reason of why they need to do this. 
You see where I'm going with this? We know the motive because we're reading it. But he's using this in a way to get the people on board because he knows this is the only way the people are going to listen. As if we're threatening the religion, we're threatening what they believe in. And that's what he's doing. This is, this is his plan. This is his purpose. Now, Artemis was known as Diana. She was known as the goddess of fertility, a protector. Um, she's known as the twin sister of Apollo, the daughter of Jupiter, Zeus, and Latona, which is Leto. And she, and what's it called? The, the ones that they would make, these little goddesses or these little statues, it was a lot, it was a it was represented by a carved figure that had many breasts because it was fertility. Yeah, I looked that thing up. It's nasty. <laughs> it's creepy. Yeah, I was like, I was afraid it wasn't a fine. I was like, this is just weird. Yeah, it was. It's just really weird. I mean, you know. But if you get a chance, you can look it up. But it's 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 this is what they were selling. But because this is what she represented. Was there it, a lot of celestial gods too at that time? There was a lot of yeah, a lot of different. Well, I mean, you have Zeus. You have all these. Yeah. the Greek gods and all of that. So she was part of this. And they also erected a large statue in Ephesus for her. And, you know, many believe that this statue had fallen out of heaven, which many believe was a meteorite that had to do with this goddess as well. So they worshiped that. So they basically worship this goddess and they worship, you know, because they believe that this meteorite fell from heaven was really her um, or at least one of her, you know, a statue of her. This temple was one of the wonders of the ancient world. So many people would come out because in the, in, this would make one of those seven wonders of the world at that time. So many people would like to come out and see this statue of this great Artemis or Diana. Now they would have festivals and many people would come out for these festivals, right? But obviously they were coming out because these festivals involved wild orgies. Yeah, quiet. Yeah. <laughs> So, you know, that yeah, this is so, you know, you got people, oh, we're going to go. We're going to go to the festival of Artemis. Oh, really? I want to go, too, because <laughs> this is what was taking place. There was wild orgies and carousing and basically carousing is excessive drinking. And basically, the Ephesians were recognized for this. And this was the rigid religious and commercial livelihood. Is that what they do? Uh, at the Mardi Gras and yeah, there's similar different things in that. Yeah. Heard that. Yeah, there's many different things in that. Yeah, maybe different ways. Maybe it's not in that same aspect, but it's still the same thing. It's it's satisfaction of the flesh, it's desires of the flesh, and this is all this was. And so, therefore, they drew they drew large crowds. They had people coming from all over the place that wanted to see the statue and be part of that festivity. You know, because of this is all the stuff that was going on, and not only that, the business people that were there. You know, like such as Demetrius, when these festivals went on, you got people coming in from all over, a lot of money. You know, it was more like, okay, well, look, now that you're here, you can take her home with you and you can worship her every every day in your home for 1995. <laughs> you need this. <laughs> yeah. Isn't that happens now because we, festivals exist right now. There's art festivals, there's food festivals, and there's... Nothing but vendors and vendors and vendors. There's a main act, but they're just vending. We don't realize what we're buying all the time. Yeah. All the time we know we're buying food. You know? Yeah, <laughs> no. It goes back to the root of our festivals and other things. No, yeah, definitely. You know, and so we see here, and this is what Demetrius now is going to use to cause the people to come in agreement with him. But the reality of it is, is Demetrius was speaking to a people who were already greedy. And who love money. So by them hearing this, they were only hearing what they wanted to hear. And again, he guides this by religion and by civic pride or their civil pride and their freedoms or whatever they had in there. And he used this as a way to get people to back him. And this is where we need to be careful today that we're not following movements. We're not following people. We're following Christ because there are many today that even in the church today that will guise the gospel and use the name of Jesus, that will use the church, that will use, um, you know, our, our own country and our law. They will use all these different things as guises and automatically we're like, yes, this is the this is the man. This is the woman. Yeah, he's fighting for us. Yes. 
and all of this. But what is at the heart of all of that? Is it a heart after Christ or is it money? What's at the heart of it? Many wars that have gone on were not about the freedoms and all that. They were about money. You know, it's amazing. I see, um, and this is just one spark, small part, but if you ever watch the food that built America, you know, you know that all these businesses thrived and became these multi-million dollar or billion dollar companies in times of war. Many people got rich in times of war. Yeah. You know, and, and again, I'm not, I don't know all the details. I'm not a huge history buff, but it's just, it's just amazing. I was like, wow, that's crazy, you know? And, you know, and I'm not, you know, again, I don't, I'm not a history buff. I'm not going into all these conspiracies and all that, but I'm just saying, we always have to know that the heart of man, we can't always trust, you can't trust the heart of man. We can't even trust our own heart. We need to be careful for those that will use this and deceive the church today for their own benefit and their own gain. Are we fighting for religious rights or are we fighting for a political party? Are we fighting for, you know, so-and-so or whatever it may be? We as a church need to be careful that we don't fall into this because we see here Demetrius, Demetrius has his own motive and his own purpose. Now, don't get me wrong. We should pray for the, our leadership. We should pray and we should seek the Lord. But again, it's coming to the Lord, keeping our eyes on Jesus. Because there should be no other Savior but Jesus. Him and him alone. And we need to be careful that we don't fall into this place. Because we see here that Demetrius is using this for his own benefit. And because of that, many people are willing to jump on board. And what does this do in verse 20, 29? It says, when they heard this, they were enraged and were crying out, great is Artemis of the Ephesians. So the city was filled with the confusion and they rushed together into the, into the theater, dragging with them Gaius and Aristarchus, Macedonians who were Paul's companion in travel. So all this did is it brought a bunch of confusion it caused an uprising, and the people didn't even know why they were doing it. All it became is, what? You are coming against what I believe in? And now all of a sudden, you have this whole mob. You have all these people storming into the, to the, to the theater, which held about 24,000 people. And not only that, they're shouting, great is Artemis, and they're shouting all this, but they have no idea why. All that was, and this is all set up by Demetrius. Demetrius is causing all this because Demetrius is worried about Demetrius. But the people don't know that. They're thinking, yeah, you're right. And they probably don't even know who started it. Selfish greed. Yeah. yeah. And it's crazy because, you know, again, I'm, I, don't, I don't follow all these different things and everything. But what kept coming to mind is that thing that happened at the White House where they're storming the gates and doing all these things and all this is going on. There was so much confusion. Again, I don't know the details. I don't know all of that, but it just reminded me of that when I hear that and I was seeing that, I was like, wow, even the rioting going on and, you know, looting all around, you know, the country and all of these different things, not just there, but all over people in confusion and rising up and don't even know why. And all they're doing is you just have all these things going out there while they're attacking this. They're attacking what? And they're going out there and they're causing all these things. And they have no idea what they're even doing or why they're doing it. Everyone else is doing it. Then we have to do it. No, they said this. They said that. They came against this. They can't do that. And now all of a sudden you have a whole group of all these people doing that. But who's really behind it? Who started it? What was the reason? What is the purpose? What is the motive? Yeah. Contagious. Just, Very contagious. They felt that they had a right. That was terrible. And many times people won't even know why they're out there doing it. Yeah. They just do it to do it because, again, that's what that's what confusion will do. And that's what Demetrius wanted. Because he did, he was worried about his business, his way of life. And this is why it's so important. That we don't get caught up on everything that's in the media. We don't get caught up on what the crowd. We don't get caught up on what everybody else is doing. We need to stay focused on Christ Jesus. 
and grow in knowing him more, the way, the truth, and the life. There's no other way. There's no other way but Jesus. And we need to stay in that way. Stay to be radical for what you know and who you know versus what you don't know and be ignorant and say, I don't even know what. Yeah. Exactly. At least with Jesus, we have an answer. Yeah, especially today, the way the media were bombarded with their opinions. Yeah, and, and there's so many things. And we, again, we're only getting part. We don't know everything that's going on. We don't even know the whole root of it all. So many other things. So, And I'm not saying that, it, again, I don't have the answers. I don't know the reason. I'm just saying we need to be careful. The Bible tells us to be watchful. The Bible says to be careful when it says, oh, there he is. There he is. He's over there. Yeah. Wars and rumors of wars. We need to be watchful and prayerful and seeking the Lord. I'm not saying that we don't, you know, we don't stand for what is right. I'm not saying that we don't, you know, we don't stand in our convictions, but let me also encourage you know why you believe what you believe. Not don't just believe it because well because they told me to or because the church says I have to know. You have to know in your heart what's your conviction yes. and why you believe it. Yes, the Bible says it and and okay, then it says it, but maybe it's, the Bible's not always clear on certain things. But this is why it's so important in your walk and our walk with the Lord that we know why we believe what we believe. But at the same time, don't let it cause us to hate one another and bring harm to somebody. Because then again, is that really Christ? And this is just about not getting caught up with the crowd as these people did. But we see here there was a whole purpose and a motive, and that was for money. I know we're running out of time here, so we're going to jump up here a little bit. It says in verse 30, uh, 30 and 31, but when Paul wished to go in among the crowd, the disciples would not let him. And even some of the Asiarchs who were friends of his sent to him and were urging him not to venture into the theater. An Asiarch is basically a, um, I wrote it here, a high ranking officer of the province of Asia. They were responsible for the religious and the political order of the region. So this, this was obviously friends of Paul. And also the people that were with him, they basically said, no, no, we, we don't want you to go in there. They're going to tear you apart. So they were looking out for Paul here. So we see here, even in that, Paul had some friends, even in high places here in Ephesus, which is pretty cool. You get to see that even through all of this, God was taking care of Paul. And verse 32 and 34 says this. Now some cried out one thing, some another, for the assembly in confusion was in confusion. And most of them did not know why they had come together. They didn't even know why they were there. They were just there. And some of the crowd prompted Alexander, whom the Jews had put forward, and Alexander, motioning with his hand, wanted to make a defense to the crowd. Now, they, now all of a sudden, they're just looking for somebody. to. They always have to have a scapegoat, right? So they, what they do is they draw this man, Alexander. Now, we don't know if he was a Christian or not. It just says he was a, he was a Jew, and the Jews pushed him forward. So as Alexander is getting ready to speak, and many believe that he wasn't necessarily going to say, you know, speak the gospel. He could have actually been willing to say, you know what? No, no, no. Us Jews have nothing to do with those Christians. Don't put us in the same boat with them, you know. But before he even gets a chance to speak, verse 34 says, but when they recognized that he was a Jew for about two hours, they called out with one voice, great is Artemis of the Ephesians. So they don't even know. They just start chanting and chanting. Why? To overpower. to overpower him. And not only that, they were coming together in one voice, standing together. We're, we're in unity here. We're fighting for this. Not realizing that it was a false hope. They were deceived. But yet they feel empowered. They feel empowered, not realizing that there's someone behind the scenes that set all this up. For money. That, that and, really does remind us of yeah. And that'll cause any one of us because all of a sudden we're like, yes, we're standing together and all of this. And, and that could be powerful. But then all of a sudden there's a motive behind it that we have no idea. But see, when we're standing together as a church, as a body of Christ, and we're glorifying Jesus, we know it's all about Jesus. Yes. There is no motive. Lord, it is about you. That is powerful. No distraction. no distraction. Because Jesus, it's all about you and only you. 
Now, we're all imperfect, but Lord, you're perfect. <laughs> so thank God in you, we are counted righteous and we are holy in you. But it's only because of you. And nobody here is uh, higher than me or that. No, we're all in this together because, Lord, you're not a respecter of persons. You see us all the same. But because we have our faith in you. But see, they didn't realize that. They're just empowered together and they're in unity and they have no idea that they have been deceived. So let's go to 35, verse 35 to 41. And it says, and when the town clerk had quieted the crowd, he said, men of Ephesus, who is there who does not know that the city of the Ephesians is a temple keeper of the great Artemis and of the sacred stone that fell from the sky, referring to that, that meteorite. And the town clerk was basically a town liaison. Basically, he was the middleman between the assembly and Roman officials. So he was the one that would speak on behalf to the Roman officials for the assembly or for the group or those that were coming together. He was basically like that middleman. So he is there to bring out, he's there to bring order, but he's not there to bring order because he really cares about really what's going on. He's bringing order because he's fearful of Rome. Because if there was an uprising, just like the time of Pilate when he crucified Christ, if there's an uprising, what happens is now Rome will come in, knock out all the city officials, and just put new ones in place because they could not keep the peace. All Rome cared about is keep the peace, deal with it there, and don't let it leave here. Keep the peace and collect taxes. Exactly. Keep the peace, collect the taxes, and everything will be fine. If not, then he would come and, and Rome would come in and remove those city officials. Mm -hmm. You're out of office. That's it. You didn't keep the peace. You're gone. And there was no election. <laughs> it was the call of Rome. So this city clerk here, that's his concern. He doesn't care about that. He's afraid he's going to lose his job. Yeah. He's afraid that he's not going to, you know, so he's there. He's, he's going over there and he's looking just to keep the peace. So he starts off by telling them, look, it, it's everything's still in place, guys. Just calm down. This is, you know, he's, he's bringing some light. You know, they're not, they're, not, they're not causing a big thing here. Look in verse 36. It says, seeing then that these things cannot be denied, you ought to be quiet and do nothing. For you have brought these men here who are neither sacrilegious nor blasphemers or are God, of our goddess. He's saying they're not here. They're, there's no proof that they've, not, they've talked about the, this goddess, nothing like that. He's bringing truth and letting them know, but he's doing this in a civilized way. Verse 38 says, if therefore Demetrius and the craftsmen with him have a complaint against anyone, the courts are open and there are proconsuls. Let them bring charges against one another. He's letting them know, let them take them to court. Let's do this legal. We are civilized here. He's bringing them back to reality and saying they have a right for trial. Paul was a citizen of Rome. He's saying they have a right for trial. So he's telling them, you want to do this and they have a complaint? then let them do this the right way. Which is awesome because in that, what Paul is now seeing, he's getting to see, wow, okay, they're riled up. And anytime it got crazy, what did Paul do? Okay, it's time to move on. It's time to move on. It's time to move on. It, it, the Lord is leading me away because the Lord. But what this did is now it gave Paul the peace to recognize those that would stay behind would be okay because there was laws in place to protect them. There was laws in place to keep them that they would still be able to preach the gospel and they would be protected from a mob or from this type of environment that they would have to be legally taken and brought to and, you know, and dealt with that way. So he had that peace in that. So therefore he would now be able to move on to his next place. This was just God showing. And thank God for the rights and the laws that we have today as a church that we're protected. And, and don't get me wrong, I know there's many under attack and many different things, but this is where we pray. This is where we pray and we trust the Lord through it all. And we seek God. And we look to the Lord because we know that we belong to the kingdom of heaven. But thank God for the freedoms that we do have in our country today. And we could be thankful for that. Amen? Amen. So it says here, but if you seek anything further, it shall be settled in the regular assembly, for we really are in danger of being charged with rioting today, since there is no cause that we can give to justify this commotion. And when he had said these things, he dismissed the assembly. Amen. So 
Everything got worked out. Everything got brought to the light. But we see here that there was a motive behind it all. And our prayer has to be that, Lord, we as a church, we as a people of God, will not get caught up in movements. Yes. will not get caught up in political agendas or, or all these different agendas that are out there, Lord. Lord, we want to do what you've called the church to do. And that is to be a light, to be a change, to be a hope. And yes, not everybody will receive the gospel. And yeah, it will bring persecution. It will bring these different things. But Lord, let it be for your sake not for the sake of someone else's agenda, not for the sake of someone else's belief, not for the sake of what somebody, of somebody else's motive. But Lord, for the sake of you, as, as Peter says, he goes, what is better to do, to obey you or to obey God? See, when it came right down to it, then Peter stood up and said, no, we will obey God before we obey you. If it comes against your walk and our walk and our conviction of our yes, then we have a responsibility to trust God. But we also have a responsibility to pray for our governments, for our leaders, and for those in position that are able to, to keep these laws enforced and placed. As the Bible says, they don't, they don't hold a sword for nothing. They hold a sword for our benefit. But we also have to pray that they're able to use that sword rightly and in the right way. Amen. Brother AJ, you had something over there? Yeah, the whole verse of 40 just reeks of what happened June or not, uh, January 6th of, of the Capitol building. It, see, there, there were in danger of being charged with rioting. Well, that's what's happening now. <clears throat> and also it says uh, because there was no excuse for the day's event. So they can't defend them. That's why they're going, those, the rioters are going to have to go to trial for all of that. You know? Yeah, and so unfortunately, you know, there's. What happened then, it's just a repeat of history. Yeah, and basically, and, and unfortunately, you know, there was a lot, you know, there was a lot of signs, John 3, yeah. 16, a lot of, you know, um, people representing, you know, that were yeah, Christ. And so. We have to depend on the Lord Jesus Christ for Exactly. Everything that we do, we have to be accountable to Him, and we have to live by His righteousness. By His righteousness, exactly. You know, and again, this is just really, and, and that's why I said uh, this prayer was, as we're looking at the study tonight, is that we would be willing to open up our hearts to see first ourselves where we're at today in that, yeah. you know, but also where we're at as a church, because this is not an easy teaching for many of because we'll look at it like, well, see, that's how the world is today. That's how yeah. these religions are. And that's all. And yes, and there's a lot of that. Like we said, the festivals, all these, a lot of that stuff's going on. But again, nothing has changed. It's always been like that. And it's always going to be like that. You know, that's just, that's the world. That's, that's how it is. But we as a church have a responsibility that we don't follow in those same footsteps. And when we do, to recognize it, to acknowledge it, and as the Bible says, to turn our hearts to Christ, to humble ourselves, to pray, to repent so that he may heal our land. That's right. Because, again, it's not about agendas. It's not about all these motives. It's not about money. It's about glorifying God for the kingdom of God, for the salvation of souls that are on their way to hell without knowing him, knowing the true gospel, yeah. knowing who Jesus is. It's not so much about my rights. Yes, we have our rights and thank God for them. But Lord, sometimes I have to lay down those just for the sake of you, Lord. Another point that I, I just thought of right now was a lot of the work uh, that were rioting and destroying the building, a lot of them mentioned in the name of uh, God or Jesus. That, you know, that that's their, uh, their leaders were uh, they used God and Jesus in their uh, their declaration? Yeah, know? and you know, look, and I'm not here to to point fingers or to knock them down. You know, if they they have a relationship with the Lord, that's our brothers and sisters in Christ. Yeah. You know, our responsibility is to pray for one another. You know, and if there's some things out there, like I said, I don't have all the details of all that, and I don't know yeah. all the motives. I don't have all the. That's just what came to mind as I was reading this. It just really reminded me of that, and I was like, wow. This is, you know, unfortunate, but this is where we can many times get as a church. 
you know, and, and, and we need to be careful with that, you know, because again, we have to realize, Lord, whatever hidden agendas, whatever motives, Lord, bring it to the light. Help me to see it yes. because Lord, I want to be able to recognize it. And I don't want to fall into that, yeah. you know, because I may think we're standing and we're empowered, but what's really behind it? Yes. What's really the reason behind it? You know, am I uplifting and glorifying a person or a motive or an agenda? Or am I here? Or are we here together glorifying you? You know, it could be something as small as coming to church and really having to check ourselves. Lord, are we here glorifying our worship team? Or are we here glorifying you? Are we here glorifying our pastor? Or are we here glorifying you? Are we here glorifying one another? Or are we here to glorify you? It could be something as small as that that we need to be careful for what we do. Am I, am I doing these things, Lord, to glorify myself? Or am I doing it to bring your glory, Lord, in everything that we do? Because he is the way, the truth, and the life. And no one comes to the Father except through him. Yeah. And that is a very important message. Sometimes they don't even recognize that. Yeah. We're not going to be able to come to the Lord in the name of a, of a president, of a man, of a woman, any other anyone else besides Jesus only Jesus that is the one that we come to the father in. Amen. amen any questions comments thoughts <laughs> a lot to ponder yeah I have a comment and a thought for I'm thinking uh, I'm blessed by the teaching and the fact that you brought up that it brings it to a place of like where we're at now currently in times and in church, in our government, places of work, everywhere we're at, that the Lord reveals a true diagnosis of our condition, personally, but also in our surroundings. And a lot of it's not pretty because it's due to actions of sin or because of ignorance. Um, but we really have to pray. And what comes out is the importance of praying because we get caught up even in a secure place when you think of um, like unions, a lot of places offer that, especially for security and work and all that. And we don't know what they're really fighting, but we, we get stuck in believing they're doing the right thing. But it's hard when you put your trust on someone to represent you when you don't really know the truth. Yes. And this is putting us in a place like, Lord, we really need the truth. Because yes. who are we trusting and who, whom are we putting our whole trust, especially our, our livelihood and our our financial situations, but it's being wise about it and realizing, repenting of our ways and trusting God that he knows who is in every place and position and leadership, and we need to pray for them. And yes. not be against them that, oh, we can't trust them because a lot of, we can't even trust ourselves sometimes, but we trust the one who we believe, and we know that he puts it in order in the scripture. It came out that unjust actions don't always get um, accomplished. They don't always succeed because the truth prevails and we really have to shout Jesus and proclaim him and stay with that true witness. Yes. Amen. Amen. He's without spot or blemish. That's, That's why it's so important that to pray for our leaders. Yes, you know, we have the responsibility to do so. Good. Yeah, you know, and, and you know, like right now with a lot of people are, you know, disappointed because the Democrats and you know our president right now and everything that's going on and you know, and again, you know, a lot of people are discouraged, you know, because they're afraid, you know, oh, well, now the Republicans going to get in office and there's all this, this confusion, fear, all of that. But again, it's like, it, you know, if we're putting our faith and our hope in, in a man, then, yeah, there's going to be disappointment, you know. But if we can trust the Lord that no matter who's in office, don't get me wrong, we should vote and ask the Lord, OK, you know, how, which way do I vote and this and that, but always knowing that Lord, but yet you're Lord of all. And whoever's in office, Lord, we're going to trust you. And we're going to pray for it because your word tells us to do. We're going to pray for our leadership, our police departments, our, our government officials, our firefighters, you know, those in, 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 in all over the country and in all over the world. We're going to pray because that's our responsibility. That's what we're to do. But we're going to trust you through it, Lord, because no matter how it looks, and yeah, I don't like the gas prices. I don't like all this stuff that's going on. But we have to trust the Lord through it. Because he is faithful, he's aware, and you know what? And he's the only one that can bring us through. And no matter what happens, nothing surprises him. And he is still faithful. And that's why our hope and our trust has to be in him. 
because everything else is all will all pass away. What is that one song? Kings and kingdoms will all pass away, but there's just something about that name. Amen. You know, his, his kingdom is an everlasting kingdom. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Well, praise the Lord. Amen. Well, we're going to get ready to close up. I'm just going to ask that you would, you know, just give your, your prayer request to the Lord and those that are watching with us right now as we come before the Lord. Amen. Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, we just thank you, Father God, for this time and night, Lord. We thank you for your word. We thank you for your teaching. We thank you, Father God, that, Lord Jesus, you gave us quite a bit here tonight, Lord Jesus, just to ponder, to really think about, Lord Jesus, within our own hearts, within our own lives, as, as a church today, as your church, as the body of Christ, Lord God, and in the world that we live in today, Lord God. But, Father, we thank you, Lord Jesus, that, Father, we can pray, Lord. We can seek you, Lord. We can repent, Father God. We can turn to you, Lord God, and we can cry out to you, Lord Jesus, to help us, Father God, as a church, Lord, to be able to come together in prayer and unity in you, Lord Jesus, uplifting your name, Lord Jesus, and declaring your word and the gospel, the good news of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, Lord, because, Lord, there is a sure hope today, and that hope is in you and you alone, my God. Because, Lord Jesus, you, Father God, are on, the only one that can change the hearts of people, Lord. You are the only one, Lord Jesus, that can turn that heart of stone into a heart of flesh, my God. You are the only one that can bring about a change from the inside out, Lord God. Because, Lord, you're the only one that's able to do it for us, my God. So, Father, tonight, we just thank you today, Lord Jesus, that, Lord, we are in that way today, and that is you, Lord Jesus. And Lord, we thank you that today we can continue to point to that way, and that is through you, Jesus. And we thank you for the new and living way that we're able to live today in you, Lord. So Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we thank you today for our country, for our leadership, Father God, for Lord Jesus, all those that are in position, Father God of authority. We thank you tonight. We ask you for the wisdom, the guidance, and the direction that is needed, my God. We thank you for those today, Lord Jesus, that have a voice in the church today. Father God, in Jesus' name, Lord, we ask you, Father God, that they would continue to speak your truth. Father God, that they would not, Father, tickle the ears, but Lord Jesus, they would speak your truth as you bring it forth. That you would help the church, we as a church together, my God, to stand together in truth and your truth, my God keeping our eyes on you and being watchful, Lord Jesus. Father God, Lord Jesus, and prayerful, Lord. Father God, as Lord, we know that your return is soon, my God. But Lord Jesus, we can only do this in you. And Father God, if there, Lord Jesus, whatever areas that we have fallen short, that we have sinned, that we have, Father God, taken our eyes off you, we have been deceived, Lord God. We ask you in the name of Jesus to open up our eyes Father, Lord Jesus, to see the truth, my God, and Lord, in that, my God, that we would repent, Lord, and we come together tonight in repentance, and we ask you to forgive us of our sins as a body of Christ, individually and corporately, Father God, for those things that we may have been deceived by, those things that we have got caught up in, Lord Jesus, those things, Father, that we have been moved by, my God, but Lord Jesus, really, when we look at it, we don't even know why. But, Lord, we know it angered us. We know that, Father God, it, it, it stirred something within us, Lord God. But, Lord, help us to know the reason. Help us to seek you, Lord, so that we can know the right reason for it, my God. And that it would be a righteous anger, my God. And not, Father God, an anger of the flesh, my God. Or an anger of pride or an anger of arrogance or self-righteousness, Lord. But, Lord, that it would be a righteous anger, Lord. But, Father God, in that, Lord Jesus that, Lord, it would be dealt with with salt, Lord Jesus, and your love, my God, and patience, Lord. Because, Father God, you have shown us and teach us compassion, my God. So, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we just thank you tonight, Lord, as we trust in you, Lord God. Father, we're looking in our world today, but, Lord, even in our own lives today and those around us today, Lord. Even those, Father God, that, Lord, are our own community, Lord Jesus, in our, in our homes, our families, our jobs, Lord, our, our, our friendships, Lord, our relationships. Father God, everybody around us, Lord, our neighbors, Lord, our community, our cities, Lord God. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, that, Father God, that we would take this to heart, Lord Jesus, in our everyday life, Lord, so we can be watchful and careful, Lord, that we can catch ourselves when we get caught up, Lord, gossiping or falling into a place of, 
Father God, Lord, talking about people or Lord Jesus or just being angry about certain things and allowing those things, Father, to bring about frustration, Lord God. And Father, and start to swerve us away, Lord God. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we repent and we ask you to forgive us of our sins, my God. Wash us, cleanse us, help us to be sober-minded to see, Lord. Father, Lord, for this within our hearts and our lives and, our, and Father, in all that is around us today, Lord. We thank you, Father, that we're able to do so, Lord. Help us, Father, to be a light, your light in this world, and let your light shine through our lives, Father God, that they may see you and be drawn to you, Father. And Father, in the name of Jesus tonight, we lift up those tonight that are sick in body, that are in this house and our families, Lord, and those prayer requests tonight, Lord, for those for healing tonight, Lord Jesus, Father, for those that need to be comforted, for those that are, Father, hurting tonight, those that are, Father God, and, and, and just stress, Father God, or just anxiety, or Father God, just going through some tough times, we just pray for strength tonight, for peace and comfort, Lord Jesus. We thank you, Father God, for those that just have great testimonies tonight and praise reports. Father, we rejoice with them tonight, Lord, and we just thank you tonight, Father, as we bring these petitions and supplications to you, Lord. You hear the cries of our heart, Lord. And Father, in the name of Jesus, we just thank you for your peace and your strength tonight. And we ask you to continue to lead us in prayer, Lord, as we continue to pray for one another. And Father God, Lord Jesus, those things that are heavy upon our heart, we just ask you, Lord, in Jesus' name for those comforts and for the wisdom and the guidance and the direction that we need by your spirit, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Amen. We are dismissed. Amen. Are, are, are yes, yes. Sunday service, uh, prayer at uh, 915. We're going through Psalm 119 and uh, also um, uh, 1045 service as well. Normal so service. You'll be back for, uh, next Sunday as well for July 3rd. So yeah, we'll be here. We'll be here. Okay. Amen. Well, God bless you. Thank you all for joining us online as well tonight. Well, I did talk to you. Good night. Good night, Good night. Sister Alma.